Hey, hey artist! Welcome to another video. Today I am painting one of my favorite birds of all time, a great blue heron. Now, this painting belongs to a bit of a mini series that I recently did that all featured great blue herons and embraced a lot of really fun texture, so lots of paint drips and just some destructive texture and the color gold. I've got a tube of metallic gold paint and it is the most fun thing in the world. So I allowed myself to explore both texture and the use of metallic gold paint in this mini series while painting realistic great blue herons. And I'll tell you, it was so much fun. So while I am creating this painting, I wanted to talk to something that affects all of us artists. And if you haven't had this happen to you yet, <laughs> buckle up because it will at some point, but that's okay. And basically what that is, is what to do when you hit a creative block in your process. We've kind of heard writer's block, artist block, creative block. And basically, in a nutshell, what this is, is when, you know, those creative juices, the ones that we usually tap into to create artwork, they're just not flowing. And you sit down to create something and either nothing turns out right or you can't even get in the right headspace to create artwork. It just it feels like a drag and, you know, you're worrying that you've used up all of your creativity and it's not a fun time. If this is you right now, then at least you can take comfort in the fact that you are not alone and every artist and creative goes through this at some point. It's a very natural process, but I do have thoughts on the matter. I have definitely gone through several creative blocks throughout my artistic career, and I know that I will continue to go through creative blocks. But I've learned a lot from my own creative blocks and learned kind of why they happened and what I can do to make it better. And the first thing I wanted to talk about here is that creativity is not a well that can be emptied. And this amazing quote by Maya Angelou just totally sums it up. It says, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. So it's basically like a muscle and the more you use the muscle, the more in tune it gets and the more flexible and more effective it is. But, you know, our creativity, like our muscles, can sometimes get a little sore and achy and not work very well and would rather be, you know, chilling on the couch instead of exercise. <laughs> But I think what happens rather than running out of creativity when you're in those sort of creative artist blocks is instead you basically become deaf and blind to that creative voice, thankfully temporarily, but that's really how it feels like. And from my own experience, it's usually because there's something in the way. So there's usually a few reasons that someone might experience a creative block. I know for me, when I feel my creativity run dry, it's usually because I am exhausted. Either I just wrapped up a massive project and I feel like a sponge that has been completely run dry and just has nothing left to give. Or another time is, you know, if you're emotionally struggling because of some other aspect in your life. I find that, you know, when there's that emotional darkness or mental darkness, it can be really hard to get your creativity flowing, at least in my opinion and experience. And the other reason when I usually notice my creativity running dry is if I'm letting negative mindsets take hold. And the biggest one here I find is when I'm comparing myself to others. We all do it. Yeah, it's it's a fact of life. It's not a healthy thing. It can be very damaging, but it is something that we all do. And I find that when I let myself fall into that negative mindset, my creativity majorly takes a hit. So one of the first sort of steps here is to basically become aware of this. Become aware of where you might be emotionally, mentally, physically exhausted. And that first bit of awareness is kind of the first step, right? So if you realize, oh man, I'm just completely drained, I just finished this huge project, or maybe there's something happening in your life that is getting in the way, or those negative mindsets, like I mentioned. Realizing that is your first indicator to kind of take a step back, 
take a deep breath and take care of yourself. Rest when you actually need to and actually take the time to keep yourself happy. You know, make yourself a snack, take a nap, go for a walk. Even those little things can make a huge difference on a day-to-day -day basis. And this might feel a little, you know, counterproductive at times. You're like, I want to be able to get back to my, you know, creativity flow. I want to get back painting. I want to take action. But <laughs> it gets a little interesting here. And this is what I like to call the slingshot effect. Sometimes feel, you know, that taking a step back can sometimes feel really hard. And like that step back, you know, could be taking a rest, taking a break. But we got to remember that in order to have a slingshot work, you have to be able to pull back to shoot forwards. And I have definitely noticed this myself in my own artistic career. Sometimes it's really, really important to go through a phase. Sometimes I call it an emotional winter because that's what it feels like. And you're taking a rest so that the spring can bloom again. And I'm sure we've all experienced times we, where we think that just pushing hard is the answer. And it usually isn't. Usually pushing hard when you're already drained is not going to go very well. So try resting instead. So when I do find myself in a bit of a creative block and I recognize the fact that, you know, it's time for some rest, that's great. I definitely put that on the forefront, doing activities that do kind of support that rest aspect. But there's also a few additional things that I like to do when I'm in the middle of a creative block. And the first thing is that if you still want to make sure that you are creating artwork, but you don't feel, you know, that creative flow, you're not really sure what to do, I like to use that time to study. And what I mean by study is basically use that time to brush up on some skills. Sometimes it's basic skills, actually getting back to the basics of creating artwork. Sometimes I study one of the old masters and you can like replicate their work for the sake of learning. Since you aren't trying to push yourself creatively, you're basically just focusing on skill. I find that it makes things go a lot more quickly and just a lot more easily. So I'm not trying to force that creativity, but I am still using that time to create artwork in a way that's going to help me grow in the future. And because I'm still going through the act of creating art, even if it's just for the sake of learning, learning and studying, it makes it that much more easily to kickstart that creative flow again. So you can also use that time to try something new and fun. But there's a little important thing here is try to basically set no expectations for yourself. Instead of trying to create your next masterpiece when your creative well feels like it's dry, we just we need to recoup that we need to refill that well. Sometimes it's a great opportunity to actually have some fun with your art. So embrace play in your art practice instead and actually have fun with it. Sometimes I just scribble with a paintbrush and it is so therapeutic. And what's cool is that sometimes I actually let that paint scribble dry and then use it as a base for future artwork. I really like doing this because it gives a neat story element to it and it just helps to really show the evolution of the artist. And the last thing here is to cut yourself some slack. I know it can be really hard sometimes. We tend to hold ourselves to such crazy high standards that it can be really scary to step forward and even try something sometimes, especially when we aren't feeling ourselves. And like we kind of mentioned, in most cases, when you're in the middle of that creative block, it's because you aren't really feeling your best self. There's something in the way and that's blocking that creative flow. So rather than just, you know, become a battering ram and just force your way through that block, give yourself the grace to actually be okay with where you are. Everyone goes through these creative blocks. It's going to happen and it's going to keep happening through time because, you know, we artists are complex beings and 
Our art can be highly affected by our emotional and mental states, and personally, I find that to be one of the beautiful parts about creating artwork. So give yourself the grace to actually be okay with where you are. You will get that creativity flowing again, I guarantee it. And when you find that creative spark again, you are going to learn how good it felt to actually give yourself the chance to be where you are and rest when you need it. And it's going to be such a powerful lesson for you as an artist moving forward, a lesson that you can take with you for the rest of your life. And if you ask me, that is an incredibly beautiful lesson. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope that you kind of enjoyed listening to me talk about what to do when you hit a creative block. Maybe you're sitting in one right now and you don't know what to do, or maybe you just got out of a creativity block. Either way, we all experience them, so just know that you are not alone and that you will get through it. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. If you're craving more help with painting a realistic wildlife easily, then you will love the Wildlife Painting Academy. Each month, new masterclasses are added, complete with my voice walking you through every moment, paint mixing recipes, reference photos, and so much more. You can check it out in the link in the description of this video.